So this was that chart that I was talking about. Um, if you can imagine this red stuff all being rainbow colored, then that's what it originally looked like with all the cross, oh my goodness, cross references in the Bible. That was taken and made into this, which it's all red because, ooh, it's evil, you know. These are all the contradictions in the Bible, apparently. And there's this gigantic list, and you could have gotten this on a poster and hung it up in your room, like a lot of atheists did. Or you could have seen it somewhere as a Christian and gone, oh my gosh, how did I never notice that there's all these contradictions? But if we zoom in here, I mean, there's legitimate lists here. We're going through all of these right now. But remember, I just said, where was it? How many of Aden's offspring returned from Babylon? The next one. How many of Adonikim's offspring returned from Babylon? That happens a bunch of times when this is the same contradiction. There's also duplications. I don't remember where they are now, but there's a couple that are the same right in a row. Like the exact same contradiction in a row. Somebody just didn't do their research or didn't do their due diligence in making sure that it looked nice, you know? But you've got all this text that makes it look really scary. And then you go down here. This is done by the Reason Project. Oh, actually, I never noticed this. It's data compilation, Steve Wells. This is the guy who wrote the Skeptics Annotated Bible. So there you go. It's related. Graphic design, Andy Marlowe. Honestly, most of it is fine, but Andy, I guess, must have messed up on some stuff. Inspiration is kind of funny to use that, Chris Harrison. But it's this Reason Project was founded by Sam Harris and Annika Harris. Um, so this is like associated with one of the guys who is the four horsemen of the um, new atheist movement back in the day. You know, and I think it's just it's just a terrible work. It's just not well done. Well, it's kind of um, funny too, like. Like you said, the intention was to make the Bible look evil, but in the way that I perceive it, it makes what they did look evil. Like what, yeah. what they're, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't remember if it's on here or on the website, but somewhere it talks about it being from a literal translation of the Bible. I think that's on the website. So there's a website called lyingforjesus.com or .org, which you can tell what they think <laughs> based off that. Um, I'm just going to exit out of that. Okay. Remove. So lyingforjesus.org has kind of an updated version of this. Let me see if I can find it. And on the bottom they say, ah, yes, here we go. I'm going to pull this up for you guys. Um, stop that screen, get this one. Where is it? Interactive resource. There we go. Sorry. Awesome. So if you look at the bottom down here, many of the contradictions above stem from a literal interpretation of the stories in the Bible. So literal trans literal interpretation there you go some verses may be mistranslations allegories exaggerations etc and can be interpreted in the context of the society in which they were written rewritten or otherwise modified over time while others are very clear contradictions <sighs> considering that 31 percent of adults believe in a literal interpretation of the bible and the fact that many sects disagree on which parts to take literally it seems reasonable to include these contradictions based on literal interpretation. I don't think so. I don't think that's the case. I don't think it's li it's reasonable to include them based on literal interpretation because you get woodenly literal stuff like a lot of the stuff we're going to go through. Mm -hmm. And they just go, well, some Christians disagree about, about this with other Christians, so therefore we're just going to take whatever we want. We're just going to mm -hmm. do it. We do with it whatever we want. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, what does that even mean? Uh, a literal interpretation. So good question. Like, like, um, you know, there's, there's multiple, like, um, several hour debates on the definition of the literal meaning of, uh, day, 
in Genesis. Oh yeah. You know? Oof. I mean, it's like, and everyone claims to take it literal, but it literally has many meanings, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Is it a 12 hour That's day? True. Is it a 24 hour day? Is it a, a long period of time? Is it a day of a king's reign? You know, it's there, there are. It's almost like words have different meanings. Right. And sometimes it's not very clear. Right. And then by the, you know, and then we can kind of gauge it based on the context. So it's uh, yeah. for, for them to say that 30, what was it, 31% of people take the Bible literally? So what? Yeah, there actually was a link there. Let me see what they say. It's probably just a Pew Research poll or something. Oh, look, a Pew Research poll. <laughs> wow, got that right. So the this was a study done. Here, let me pull this up. Now we're really getting far afield, but whatever. This is fun stuff. I mean, so does that mean uh, that 30, 31% believe that Jesus is a, a literal door or that the earth has, you know, God stretched out the four it. corners? Yeah. You know, that, so know. The, it's a flat square, apparently, if it's if we're taking it literally. Yeah, I'm not <clears throat> sure exactly what it means. So interpreting scripture here, 31% say the word of God should be taken literally with not much explanation as to what that means. Uh, twenty-seven percent say it's the word of God, but not everything is taken literally. Thirty-three percent say the word of God, but they don't know as to whether it should be taken literally, and then so on and so forth. Um, hmm, I don't know that they explain even in the Pew Research what they hmm. mean by literal. Let's see. Because. If people, imagine people are answering that question, they might have different views as to, or they're going to have different views as to what literal actually means. Because I could, I could look at it a couple of different ways. I could say, you're woodenly literal. Everything is, there's no metaphor whatsoever. Or I could say, I read it as the literal word of God. I read it in a literal mm -hmm. sense, meaning it's literally the word of God. That's a whole different thing. Right. Or I could say, it's literally true which is another different thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I could view the word literal different there. So they just break it down a bu amongst a whole bunch of demographics here. Um, you know, I wonder if the skeptics, if that's, I mean, it, it's, they're implying on the, on that, on that, um, the little graphic that that is how they're understanding when Christians say that they take it literally, that's how they're understanding it, is that they don't see any metaphor. Well, Pew Research may not have thought of it that way, but lyingforjesus.org certainly did. Right. Seems like an odd, I don't know, understanding of, of what Christians are saying when they say that they believe that it's literal. Yep, it is odd indeed.